Hey guys, what's up? Blacker Bricks here, back with another video. We're here today with Blacker Bricks Q&A episode number four. Um, as always, I answer the questions from the last week's episode, so if you want your question to be answered next time, just leave it down here in the comments section below. Okay, with that being said, let's get right into the questions. So the first one comes from Speedy Programmer, and this is what they have to say. I have an extensive collection of LEGO investing sets now, but when should I sell them? Just even before I finish the sentence, very good question. Uh, most of my sets are climbing in value by about 20 to 50% per year, but lots of them have rumors of re-releases. I am making so much this year with all my sets climbing in value, so when will they stop? Oh, sorry, so when will this stop? Sorry for the long comment, I love your content. Thank you, Speedy Programmer, I'm glad you like the content. And uh, you never need to apologize for long comments. I, I honestly, I love reading them. So I have to apologize. My answer won't be as good as you might expect it because unfortunately, I don't know which sets specifically you're talking about. Obviously, in this, uh, I mean, if you're watching this, Speedy Programmer, leave a comment down below. Let me know what sets. You can always uh, email me too. I have my email there uh, in the about page, but, uh, that would definitely help. Otherwise, when it comes to re-releases, I have to say, I haven't really seen that many. Um, just, just off the top of my head, I remember the Taj Mahal was re-released, the ship in a bottle, and then the, um, the Saturn V. Uh, I honestly don't remember too many other re-releases, at least not recently. So I don't think you should worry about it too much. Um, it, it definitely is something that you shouldn't completely discount and just re disregard. There is always a chance, right? But I I think you should you should definitely look at the environment, right? So if it's something like Star Wars The Mandalorian, for example, which it's probably not, right? But if it is something like that, you see that, okay, people are going crazy over this show. Sell it because that that craze will die down, right? So Mandalorian was really popular just a month or two ago. And I'm not saying it's not popular, but then the, the pop culture and stuff moves on. So right now the show WandaVision is very, uh, very popular. So if there was a set re relating to that, you want to sell it. So Lego investing, I mean, it is it is pretty interesting because you have to look around and see, okay, what Lego sets are popular? What media is popular? Does this relate to that? Is there a time maybe in the future I think it'll go up? And you can think to yourself that, okay, maybe I want the money now. I'm I'm willing to risk it and see. So it also depends on how many units or how many copies of the set you have. If you're like 10, maybe sell one now. See, is does it sell quickly? Are people interested? Has it selling well on Bricklink or eBay? So there's lots of things you can uh, factor in. I, I do apologize that my comment is sort of vague. I, I understand that a lot of my <laughs> comments end up being like that. But I, I hope this, this helped a bit because I think this is very interesting, something that you do need to keep in mind when you're looking at the uh, value or the resale time for a set. Um, now, Red Guy Studios asks, how do you calculate the shipping cost of an order? So I was actually surprised that I haven't actually made a video on this. I, I honestly, I might have, I just couldn't find it. So I'll just go ahead. And before I, I, I let you know, Red Guy Studios, this is only for USPS that I'm going to show you. Unfortunately... I, I don't use UPS or FedEx or any other international service. So if you're in the UK, Australia, any other country, I unfortunately, I don't know what's the best shipping cost or how you calculate it. So I'm just going to show you what I used mainly. So I go to postcalc.usps.com. I've gone to it so many times, it just shows up by itself. And uh, so once I go to here, there's quite a few things I can do. So I choose the destination country. Usually it's just US, United States. And um, so I put in my zip code and then I put in uh, a zip code I'm mailing to. So I'm just gonna put in my normal zip code and I'll just choose a random one from here. I don't even know what that is. So then you need to put in the date and then the time. Now, in my experience, this has never made a difference or any change. So I don't even bother changing them. What are you mailing? You should read over this generally, but when it comes to Lego, none of these things really apply. Um, this is probably the most important thing is you need to select. So you wanna calculate the postcard price, which we're not really doing. And then you have flat rate envelopes, flat rate boxes, and calculate price based on shape and size. So USPS has a variety of options, and I tend to use this one over here, uh, calculate price based on shape or size. And that works best for first class mail, which is under a pound. 
when it goes over a pound, usually um, I'm going to go with one of the flat rates. Uh, that's because priority mail and parcel select end up being a little bit more expensive. So I'm just going to go over here. And once I get there, oh, so I put in my ounces. So let's say it's a 12 ounce package and it's not a letter. It's not a package. It's not a large package. It's a large envelope. So I put that in and I always put is rigid, not, does not bend easily, but I haven't seen any difference in prices. So that's fine. Now, here you go. So that will show you all the different mail services. So priority mail express two day, $46, super ridiculous. So you just scroll back to the bottom and you might be saying, oh, look at that. Um, retail, media mail is 289. Now be careful. Media mail is only for media as the name might suggest. I'm not going to read over this entire thing, but really this is just for, oh, was my other video. Sorry about that. This is really just for if you're sending magazines, books, CDs. So please do not do that. That would not be a good idea. First class retail, five ninety five. There you go. Simple as that. So that's really how I calculate it. There are other websites that I have used in the past, such as PirateShip.com. Maybe in the future I'll make a video on that, a whole detailed one. But I, I hope that helped out, Red Guy Studios. Now, D Brick Shadow asks, can you give us the best advice on how to lower shipping costs in your BrickLink store? D Brick Shadow, this is such a good question. And I, I'll, I'll be honest, it's, it's, uh, it's a burning question because every seller wants to minimize shipping costs. I know some people will sometimes even charge for shipping materials, right? So they'll have an additional charge that maybe 50 cents, right? To uh, offset the cost of each bubble miller. But you're asking how to lower shipping costs. So the first thing I suggest is choose a, a, a service that is the cheapest, right? I mean, that seems sort of obvious, but some people don't do that. On BrickLink, people tend to ship with USPS because it is the cheapest, especially when it comes to small packages like first class. Uh, that's the majority. So USPS is great. I know, uh, I think Debrick Shadow, I spoke to you earlier, you're from Spain. So USPS might not be the best option for you. Uh, actually, I don't even know if it is an option. Anyways, so I, I don't know too much, unfortunately, about uh, shipping costs and methods abroad, but I'd suggest you, you look around, maybe ask other sellers in your country that are really um, like, well, some, some people won't even reply to your messages. But if, uh, if you ask, I'm sure a couple of people would like to help you out. So check that out. Hopefully you can get a good idea. Other than just good shipping methods, you want to use light packing materials. So instead of using big boxes, maybe try and use bubble mailers or something like that, right? They're much, much lighter and uh, that reduces shipping costs, obviously, because most of the time it's based on weight. Now, other than that, I can't really think of too much. Um, I guess one small thing is maybe try and pack all the pieces in one or two bags or some, some like a sealer or something like that, because having lots and lots of plastic baggies adds up. Same thing goes with lots of packing materials, or as I said earlier, boxes versus bubble mailers. So, excuse me, I'd suggest those as the best um, advice for lowering shipping costs. Now, finally, Diego Blanco Carmona has asked another very good question, and that is, how much time did it take you to get monetized on YouTube? So as you saw the little pop-up over there, I actually created a video on that. Um, it was released on Saturday, February 20th. This video is gonna be released on the 21st. So you can check out yesterday's video and see that. Now, it took me about a year and three weeks. Now, I honestly, I don't know what the average time for getting monetized on YouTube is. As a Lego channel, it's definitely not easy or quick, especially when you make crazy content like mine like I changed the the base of my content it used to be mock building then it was bricklink at one point then it was random stuff and now it's sort of moved towards investing right but how long did it take get monetized yeah it, it, about a year so it also depends I don't know if that was ever really a goal of mine that I I mean it, it obviously was that yeah making money on YouTube would be amazing but it wasn't like oh, I need to get monetized. What can I do to do that, right? It was more just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to grow naturally, right? So I didn't do any of that sub for sub. I didn't uh, do any of the things they might suggest to get monetized really quickly. I kind of just grew naturally. And I think that's the best way to actually make money, right? If you just tell people to subscribe to you and they don't watch your content, you're not going to get money, right? Well, sorry for the long-winded response, but I hope these, uh, I hope these answers helped you guys out. Thanks again. Look forward to reading your comments next time and I'll see you around. Thanks guys. All right, so this is just a little update, but 
I just wanted to share with you guys two more questions that I actually received on this video since I recorded it. So the first one comes from Jaden and they asked, do you think Lego would make a Lego VR video game? That was actually a really good question and I was thinking about it. If they did, I feel like the best VR game would be like if they put a camera or somehow they made it so that you could visit a Lego set like the inside uh, from the perspective of a minifigure. I thought that would be a really cool game. Um, now the actual question you asked I think was would they make a video game like that? that? Uh, I am not sure because I know VR is still an up and coming, uh, I wouldn't say it's a theme but a medium. So uh, it depends really. I, I think there's a decent chance. Uh, I'd definitely be interested in seeing what they choose. Then Dennis Morris asked question on Brickall, how do you increase prices? Um, on Bricklink, I know how to increase the prices and I do use Brick Freedom to integrate both. On Brickall, I want to increase the prices by 10 to 20%. I wish it would match prices on Bricklink. It's a very good question. So uh, I think there is actually a way to do that. So I'm going to go to Brickall. As some of you might know, my... Uh, store is currently closed so I'm going to go to inventory and then what I'm going to try to do is manage okay so we press on manage and <clears throat> excuse me sorry about that so what I should be able to do is select everything with that button right there and then change the hmm so I can do quite a few things so price percent change so you can increase it so if you do, you can make it like 110, right? So the price will increase or decrease. So obviously, if you do 10, it'll increase by 10%. So don't do 110%, it'll double and then some. So hopefully that helped. Just a quick little tool on that. My store, inventory, manage inventory. Okay, so yeah, that really answers everyone's questions. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.